For nearly 30 years, Italian filmmakers turned out a series of Baroque and bloody horror thrillers that were slick, stylish, and dressed to kill. From gothic chillers in the 1960s to gory murder mysteries in the 70s and gut-crunching zombie movies in the 80s, Italy's filmmakers never missed a trick when it came to exploiting our darkest and deepest fears. Today, their influence can be seen everywhere, even in some of the biggest budget Hollywood blockbusters. Cover her face with the mask of Satan. Nail it down. No! There was really no such thing as an Italian horror genre um, until the combined work of Riccardo Freda and Mario Bava in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Mario Bava? Mario Bava. Mario Bava. Mario Bava. Mario Bava. Uh, Mario Bava. 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 And that was a key Italian horror movie. It was different in style from both the Hammer film gothics of the period and even the, the, the films Roger Corman was making from Edgar Allan Poe in, in uh, the States. And it set the tone for a, a trend in Italian horror that lingered throughout most of the 1960s. Barber was instrumental in uh, establishing an Italian wing to uh, a, a type of filmmaking which had been pursued in America in the Universal films uh, and uh, in Great Britain by the Hammer films. But he brought something very peculiar to them as well, which was uh, a greater emphasis on the visual surface of the film and the stylistic qualities of the film as opposed to the narrative. che si applicò all'horror in genere la ricchezza di immaginazione italiana proprio, un po' come è successo poi col western, insomma. <ride> Supernatural seems to run riot through the films, and the style is as important as the story. Italian horror films are Baroque. Lots of frills and, <laughs> and tiny little details and curves. In Barber's case, fog, that's what he liked. Mask of Satan was made in black and white, but when he started making films in colour, they were wedges of coloured fog. Barry Sullivan and Norma Bengel take you into the most fantastic science fiction adventure ever filmed. C'est lui qui m'a donné l'idée euh, du, de, de l'émotion, qu'on peut donner d'émotion et tout, c'est que, en définitive, le cinéma, c'est le cadrage. Parce que c'est le cadrage, c'est l'œil que tu as dans la vie. D'un coup, tu vois quelqu'un, tu es attiré par un défaut, une qualité, ou, euh, ou tu le regardes dans les yeux, ou tu, euh, le, tu vas regarder euh, un décor, mais ce décor va t'inspirer pour quelque chose. Donc, c'est le cadrage qui va donner l'émotion. Quand on parle de Bava, on parle d'un des plus grosses techniques européennes et mondiales. Hein. Quando una persona diventa adulta perde quella creatività molto infantile.
bava non l'ho persa. Io penso che i grandi artisti, quelli veri e creativi, sono bambini. Ces gens-là, euh, et c'était quand même le cinéma B. Le cinéma B, tous ces gars qui, avec des bouts de ficelle, ont fait un cinéma formidable. Formidable parce qu'ils adoraient ça, parce qu'ils étaient dingues de ça, parce qu'ils s'en foutaient de l'argent qu'ils gagnaient ou qu'ils ne gagnaient pas. Mais ils adoraient ça. This was the period of cheesecake type horror movies like Playgirls and the Vampire where uh, the troupe of strippers get stranded in a, in a vampire's castle and so half the film is, is the girls prancing about in, in, in uh, flimsy underthing. And the other half is, is the vampire prowling about in a cloak. The I love best uh, are the ones I saw when I was a kid. You know, in a huge theater, me and another guy being the only paying people watching crap movies uh, with giant lizards, uh, with uh, idiotic monster robots, you know. Those are the pictures I do remember best. You have to do a film, a movie, in two weeks uh, sometimes because they used to finish one in two weeks and made another one. And they were, we, we were working for uh, sometimes uh, 13, 15 hours a day, even more. And on the set, obviously, there was the spirit of adventure, because the films that I have made are all the films that have not cost a lot of money. trasformavo in diavolo e poi senza nemmeno tanti trucchi perché mi facevano un po' verde io cambiavo mandavo un po' di, di sangue negli occhi è chiaro che erano in economia e anzi facevo, si facevano molti più sforzi per far riuscire un prodotto buono quindi è tutto di guadagnato io ne sono ben felice sono riscattata in una parte della mia carriera dove quando scrivevano protagonista di team di serie B, e dicevo, vabbè, che devo fare? My opinion sometimes, little money, they are more important than a big budget. You don't have to dream too big, you know. You have to dream every time, but something impossible, you know. And that is the secret of the life. Je suis sûr que quelqu'un qui n'est pas du tout du cinéma, mais qui aime le cinéma puisqu'il est dans une salle ou à la télévision, quand il voit un film comme ça, le lendemain sa journée sera différente, et peut-être que sa vie aussi. Parce que souvent, qu'est-ce qu'on appelle la chance dans la vie La chance, c'est que tout d'un coup, quelqu'un t'appuie sur l'épaule et te dit quelque chose, qui a l'air une chose assez banale, ce qui n'est pas le cas de ces trois-là, mais cette chose banale va te faire réfléchir et dire « mais j'ai jamais pensé à ça, mais en effet ». Et souvent, souvent c'est accidentellement que la chance arrive. One of the unsung pioneers of Italian horror is 77-year-old Renato Polselli. He began making thrillers in the 1950s and was responsible for the first real Italian vampire film, The Vampire and the Ballerina, released in 1960. Polselli went on to explore the sometimes dark and devious world of human psychology. And then the occasions always 
data la possibilità di fare magari non i film che avrei desiderato fare però film di certa consistenza di lieviti commerciali in ogni film anche il più squallido qualche cosa che mi desse la soddisfazione per cui facevo quel mestiere il immaginere è nato come la volontà di trovare la ragione per cui una certa fascia mentale di spettatori era suggestionata da quest'idea. Tu sei l'eletta. Ma solo quando nel tuo sguardo l'ebrezza si scioglierà nell'infernale fuoco dei desideri, i tuoi occhi saranno per l'eternità. Che non c'era una rispondenza reale tra un mondo irreale e uno reale, era sempre il mondo reale che si presentava sotto certe maschere, ma che erano maschere determinate dal terrore che ognuno di noi ha di una certa cosa. Io sono, per esempio, contro tutto l'aspetto eh, iconoclastico della Chiesa, proprio perché se lei entra in una Chiesa, trova un invito alla violenza. Perché nel, trova uno che sta in croce, un altro che ha un pugnale nel corpo, uno che ha le piaghe, è un mostro, del, un museo degli orrori. La psicosi di massa del terrore crea il terrore. Strong emotions, really strong emotions for me. And so you have to put violence. That's not real violence. When you say the thriller are bad because uh, there's a lot of violence inside, and I don't agree with this because the violence is the violence that you see on television every day, on the network television, on the TV programs. That's the real violence. When, a, when a, I don't know, when a blade is coming with blood, it's not violence. That's art, pure art. I love it. I love that. Come on, Frames intends to pay homage to the thrillers of the 70s. And it's a typical th Italian thriller style uh, with, a, with a killer, with a black go, with a machete, and something like that. At last it has arrived. The return of the great thriller, which is the link with the serial killer that scattered death in America and to the filming of a video clip. Who really is the mysterious and fascinating Stefania Stella? Stefania Di Giandomenico presents Fatal Frames Directed in music by Al Festa The Extreme Limit of Fear well, A giallo is a, a, is a murder mystery um, But it's a murder mystery that spends a great deal more time On the violence and the sleaziness of the events Than you would expect from, say, an Alfred Hitchcock film Giallo is Italian for yellow, which was the color used for the covers of popular thrillers by writers like Edgar Wallace and Agatha Christie. Their complex, convoluted plots 
provided the basis for a series of movies that were big hits in the 1960s and 70s. Mario Bava's Blood and Black Lace was one of the first giallos. It was a stylish and shocking murder mystery set against the background of a top Italian fashion house where the models are being murdered one by one. L'horreur qui glace le sang. Barber can probably claim to have been the main player in the giallo field and many of the stylistic devices which he used in Blood and Blood Lace and uh, The Evil Eye, which is a slightly earlier film, were taken up by other directors, including Dario Argento, who went on to become, again, one of the more influential Italian directors. Well, Dario Argento became a star here in Italy in, let's say, at the beginning of the 70s. A very, very popular star, you know, everybody knew him because he made the television series uh, the door into darkness, uh, and uh, he was uh, the host of the serial, like Hitchcock did in his Hitchcock Hour. And this serial was a uh, huge hit, and he became uh, well known all over Italy. Then he made, just after that, he made uh, Deep Red, which was a smash hit everywhere. So he, he really became uh, a major star, yeah. like a rock singer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the grand gesture is very important. Narrative cohesion comes a long way behind. They're films of psychological realism, but almost surreal story construction. The surface is often absurd, as the stories of Italian opera are often absurd. The bubbling uh, sense of emotion and uh, the supernatural and the irrational, which comes to its finest flower probably in late Bava and, and uh, mid period Dario Argento. In the late 1970s, a crisis hit the Italian film industry. Many of the top producers left the country and took their money and their movies off to America. The people working in the movie business was, were without, uh, without work. Not only the actors, but also the cameramen, the director, the, no money at all. When I arrived in 69, they produced about 400 Italian films a year. Yeah, today it's 18 films of pure Italian production. I really don't know what, what happened. Well, that's bad news. I have to remind you that there are still cannibals in the southeastern jungles of New Guinea. What? <laughs> One result of the crisis of the late 1970s was an increase in the number of low-budget exploitation films being produced. In an attempt to gain audience attention, these films competed with each other to be more outrageous and more controversial. One director who came to the fore during this period was Lucio Fulci. Ah! 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 Ah!
Carducci had begun in the 1950s as a writer of popular Italian comedies. In the 60s, he turned to directing, making westerns, musicals, and giallo-style thrillers, before his career took a new and controversial turn in the late 1970s. Fulci became notorious for a series of horror films in the late 70s and, uh, and early 1980s, uh, which were distinguished by very elaborate and excessive scenes of violence. <laughs> Lucio, I don't understand. These young actresses there, they, they have to stay in the middle of snakes and with animals on top. I mean, doing these disgusting things. Is that necessary? I mean, uh, do we just simply enjoy that? There's this strange sort of carnival feeling to these scenes in Fortier's films. They're simultaneously uh, disgusting and impressive. Uh, and that's the, uh, that's the line that his films tread. Um, when he draws violence out only to make it seem somehow almost miraculous and amazing as well as disgusting. The big American studios and the big American directors like Spielberg, they got it. They took it. If you think to Jurassic Park 2, it uh, looks like a Fulci movie. It's uh, big, uh, obvi obviously made with a lot of money. But uh, it's uh, a, s a continuous, uh, continuing happening of very strong shocks with no connection. If you think of the, which is uh, the style which uh, Fulci made uh, with Zombie 2, you know, there is a very teen, a very teen plot, but a lot of, of shock sequences. <laughs> There have been several very prominent instances of Italian films having a, a very strong influence on American trends as well. And probably the best example of that, in certainly in horror uh, film terms, is uh, Mario Bava's 1971 film, A Bay of Blood. There was a, a distinct knock-on effect from Bay of Blood to Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, in turn, was one of the most successful horror franchises that trend uh, is at least partially uh, generated by Barber's Bay of Blood. The Italian atmosphere is very different from any other country. People think that Italian is a sunny country, and, and it is, but even in the sun you can find a dark part. <laughs> 